SpaceX, the first space industry that brought up the idea of a starship and was not shy to start working on it, has had it rigorous for some time. The super heavy that was built to burn up 33 Raptor engines hasn't given the company a chance to take fresh air and breathe a moment off a successful launch of the fully stacked starship. SpaceX and Elon Musk has now seen to figure things out and have the tall gigantic skyscraper structure lift off from Earth and head to the moon or Mars. Let's look at how the first static fire test will wrap up, now the company seems to get everything working out for good. We should be optimistic about SpaceX because they don't mind failing, and they know that failure teaches them a lot about how to make things work. So, they move at a snail's pace when developing new methods, technologies and ways of thinking. Because of this, the future of space and space exploration belongs to business people and wealthy people with vision. Another company dropped out. Boeing's biggest problem is that it has worked with the government for so long that it's hard to tear them apart. So with SpaceX's progress so far, we can say that now is the right time for the company to dominate another planet in the universe as the sole heir. Since with SpaceX, we can smell the success from afar. Starship passed the static fire test for the first time by starting all six engines simultaneously. This gives us hope that the current Starship 24 prototype is ready for testing. The next test will be of the super heavy booster with 33 engines, which will be even bigger. The prototype was then rolled back to the factory for improvements to make it powerful before another test, after which we could call it successful. Except for SpaceX rockets, all other rockets in the world, including including Saturn V and NASA's new rocket Space Launch System are one-time use rockets that are thrown away in space after each launch. The huge Super Heavy Starship system was designed to aid SpaceX founder, CEO and chief designer Elon Musk realize his dream of colonizing Mars and making humans a species that lives on more than one planet. This would protect the future of the human race and help people reach their full potential. And it looks like Musk's destiny is tied to the Starship project because we remember in one of his tweets, he said, There is a reason no fully reusable orbital rocket has been built. It's an insanely hard problem. Moreover, it must be rapidly and completely reusable, like an aeroplane. This is the only way to make life multi-planetary. Efficiency of scale is why Starship is so large. Most people in the space industry either couldn't imagine the huge super heavy Starship system or thought it was science fiction. But Elon Musk's company SpaceX showed them that they were wrong. Nothing in the world can compare heat with the Super Heavy Starship as a fully reusable launch vehicle that can be reused. Starship is the key to humanity's future in space exploration, whether in our solar system or beyond. And now it is all set to use the power of its fully reusable Super Heavy Lift Super Heavy Starship. Once it is working, it will be the most powerful rocket in the world and will be able to carry the most weight of any orbital rocket ever built. After another successful static firing for Starship's Super Heavy Booster, SpaceX is getting close closer to being ready to send its next generation rocket on its first test flight into space. The first time a Super Heavy with seven Raptor engines was turned on was at Starbase Development Center in Texas. That's more than twice as much as a previous record which was set just a few weeks ago when SpaceX set fire to three Raptors. A static fire test is like revving a car's engine while the car is in neutral. In the case of Starship, the booster is kept on the ground while the engines are turned on. The seven engines on the prototype type called Booster 7 worked well for about 10 seconds during the last test. Elon Musk said on Twitter that Booster 7 will return to Starbase's high bay for robustness upgrades, while another booster rolls out for testing. Musk wrote, the next big test will probably be a full stack wet dress rehearsal, and then in a few weeks we'll fire all 33 engines. SpaceX is still waiting for the FAA launch license for Starship's first test flight into orbit. The company passed a big test in June when an environmental review was completed. This means that the launch can go ahead but the mission plan must be changed in dozens of ways. Once regulators give SpaceX the go ahead, Starship will be able to take off from Starbase, go into orbit for a short time and then land on the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Hawaii or into the arms of Mechazilla. Soon after launch, Super Heavy will break off from Starship and try to land on a modified drilling rig in the Gulf of Mexico. This leads to Starship's role in NASA's Artemis program which will send astronauts back to the moon's surface as early as 20 2025. SpaceX seems to have successfully fired up a Starship and a Super Heavy Booster hours apart, testing a total of 
three new Raptor 2 engines on the two rockets. SpaceX says it has finished a static fire with two engines on Starship 24. This happened less than three hours after the company successfully fired up a Raptor 2 engine for the first time on a rocket prototype. That earlier test, done on the Super Heavy Booster 7, was also the first time SpaceX used its new Starbase Orbital Launch Site to carry out a static fire test. It was also the second time a Starship Booster prototype was used for a static fire test. Even if the company had stopped working after Booster 7 passed its first test by fire, it would have been very successful day. SpaceX wasn't done though. Instead, after Booster 7's seemingly perfect single Raptor static fire, SpaceX loaded Starship 24 with a small amount of liquid oxygen and methane fuel and lit two of the ship's six engines. At first, it wasn't clear how many engines were involved, but later, SpaceX tweeted that two types of engines were being tested. Most likely one of these engines was a Raptor that was optimized for sea level and had a smaller bell nozzle. The other was a Raptor optimized for a vacuum with a much bigger bell nozzle. About 10 months ago, Ship 20, SpaceX's first prototype of a Starship that could go into orbit, started static fire testing in a similar way. Its first day of static fire started with a single Raptor vacuum engine and ended in October 2021 with an RVAC test and a Raptor test at sea level happening at the same time. SpaceX has been a little less careful with Starship 24, the second prototype that might be able to go into orbit to start proof testing. Ship 24 already has six Raptors installed, but during its first static fire test, Ship 20 only had four of its six engines installed. SpaceX also took about three weeks to progress from Ship 20's first static fire test of its single Raptor 2 engine to its first static fire of all six engines. Ship 24, on the other hand, might be able to try its first static fire test with all six engines in just a few weeks. While Ship 24 took longer than Ship 20 to get its first static fire, Ship 20 finished its first static fire test 25 days after its first proof test, which was done to make sure the prototype was in good working order before moving on to more destructive testing with flammable fuel and intentional ignitions. Ship 20, on the other hand, finished its first static fire of all six engines 46 days after testing, while Ship 24 took 75 days to go from its first proof test to its first static fire. This was almost three times longer than Ship 20, a prototype that was basically the first of its kind. The upgraded Raptor 2 engines on Ship 24 may be blamed, if not all, instead of going straight into hot Raptor testing like Ship 20, which started with a partial ignition pre-burner test, SpaceX gave Ship 24 seven spin prime tests before its first static fire. For Raptor, spin primes test the ignition step before the burner ignition, which is a step before the main combustion chamber ignition when the engine starts to make real thrust. During Raptor static fire test, high pressure gaseous helium nitrogen or propellant is probably pumped through the engine to spin up its turbo pumps and prime them for ignition of the pre-burner and main combustion chamber. On Raptor 1, once the flow rate was high enough, the pre-burners would light, making hot gas that the main combustion chamber would mix with and light one more time to start the engine. Space actors finally crossed that particular Rubicon. Hopefully, testing of the Raptor 2 on Starship 24 and Super Heavy Booster 7 will speed up. SpaceX has test windows scheduled. A notice sent to Boca Chica, Texas resident, on August 10th confirmed that the company plans to do at least one more static fire test before 2023. Is Elon Musk now prepared to head to the moon? Well, at least there is a new launch date for Starship's first payload. Click on the video to learn more about this revelation.